Warning, this podcast may contain graphic violence, sexual themes, and bad language. If our language offends you, we apologize, but we do not give a fuck. Be mindful of your kids listening. All right, guys, welcome back to The Tragedy of Cinema. This is our Real Talk number eight. Uh, tonight, we have a very, very special Real Talk. Uh, we are actually jo- I'm actually joined by nine other people for this Real Talk. Um, it's the first time we've had this many people in a Real Talk on any of the Real Talks we've done or even any of the Zoom meetings I've been a part of. So this should be very interesting. They all know their assignments. They all know when they're supposed to go. So this is going to be probably, as uh, Greg said, an Abbott and Costello cluster by the time this is over with. But here we go. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to introduce everybody real quick. Um, then I'm, I got five little topic discussions slash questions, and we'll go from there. So uh, joining us first from the Evil Never Dies podcast, we have Brett Steppenhoff. Hello. <laughs> and then uh, number two, I got him in order on the screen. We have Kyle from the Tragedy Cinema, my co-host. You may have heard of me. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Then we also have the, uh, I guess he's not really a host. He's more of a contributor, <laughs> contributor Carl from the Evil Never Dies podcast. Hello, folks. And then number four, we have Christine all the way out from the beaches of uh, California. Hello, everybody. Uh, then we have uh, legendary Tiffany Boots, <laughs> uh, wine extraordinaire, if you will. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, then we have Jen. Uh, I work with Jen down in, in Kentucky. Hello. And then we have from the Southern Hemisphere, way, way over there in the beautiful Australia, we have Natasha. Hi. And, and Natasha, I love your accent too. And then we have uh, somebody I have never met before. This is my first time meeting him. This is Greg Buzelli. Um, Greg, uh, why don't you tell us somebody uh, us a little bit about yourself? I know uh, Brett says you're with Monsters of the Mosh Pit or something like that. I don't want to say it wrong, so please don't beat me up. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Uh, I'm Greg Bazzelli from Monsters and the Mosh Pit, so oh. horns up, everyone. I was so uh, close. We, yeah, you were close. Uh, we talk about uh, one horror movie and one heavy metal album, and I make a specialty drink that's connected to each of the shows. My oh, best so friend. A podcast. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, okay, podcast. excellent. My best friend okay. doesn't know anything about horror or heavy metal, so it's me educating him with a couple of the, our other friends involved. So That's all right. It's like Kyle, he doesn't know anything about good movies either, so I have to educate him. <laughs> <laughs> about games. No good movies. <laughs> but I do like to pick on him. It's fun. And then uh, we have joining us uh, one of my very best friends in the world. We got Dave, who doesn't have his video up, but hi, Dave. Hello. <laughs> so he's here, too. All right, so here we go. Every, now that everybody's got introduced and, and settled in, I'm going to start with the first question and we'll move this right along because I don't want this to be too long because I know some of these people are taking up some of their precious time with their family. Some of them have to go to work. So we'll just go and get started. So we'll start. You guys got your numbers. Here we go. Number one, what movie coming out this year are you most excited for? Brett. Um, the ex- the re- remake of The Exorcist. The remake of The Exorcist. You think it's going to be any good? I don't know. I haven't even seen. I'm, I don't want to be spoiled about it. So, is it going to be just as good as Halloween ends? Mm, oh, I <laughs> hope. I hope it's way better than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle. Uh, for me, it's probably Evil Dead Rise coming out in April now. Um, I think uh, Lee Cronin, lead director of that. Um, he's like he did a movie. I like. There's a hole in the ground. It's a horror movie. I really dug. And I'm a big Evil Dead fan, so I'm really excited for that when it comes out too. And those shows look excellent, so I think it's gonna be a big movie. April, excited for it. I can see yeah. everybody quickly looking at what movies are coming out this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carl, I had to make sure this one was actually coming out finally. Indiana Jones uh, Five, yes, sir. yes Dial sir. of Destiny, Dial of Destiny. I'm, re- I'm really I'm looking excited forward for that. to that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Christine, um, I'm with Kyle. The new Evil Dead movie. Me and my son both want to see it, so we're looking forward to that. All right, good yeah. choice. 
I gotta go yeah. with uh, Brett, Kyle, and Christine. I'm looking forward to the Evil Dead movie, and I'm looking forward to The Exorcist. All right. I'm in good yeah. company. Okay, so don't kill me, but I kind of want to see the Winnie the Pooh movie because I know it's going to be terrible, but I really want to see it. <laughs> you know, I would say I'm surprised, but I'm really not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine Bear is the dark horse of this year. You know? <laughs> yeah, Cocaine oh, Bear is going to yeah. be crazy. Uh, <laughs> Natasha? I'm looking forward to the Salem's Lot remake. And the one that's about the voyage of, you know, how Dracula goes to London or wherever, and it's about him on the ship. Like, it's called The Voyage of the Whatever. I can't remember now. But I think they'll both be good because finally vampires will be scary again. <laughs> All right, yeah. Mr. Greg. So, so, Natasha, not Renfield is what you're saying. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Renfield. <laughs> that's that's it. Yeah, not Renfield. <laughs> no. Oh, actually, I'm looking forward to that, too. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah. I'm actually, yeah. Uh, uh, Renfield is really, really fun. So, I'm excited for Renfield. But uh, Scream 6 will uh, probably be there. But I, I think Winnie the Pooh oh. um, and uh, I already saw, I saw Infinity Pool this morning. I was really looking forward to that. Uh, but Evil Dead, it's got to be Evil Dead, right? Uh, the Evil Dead yeah. remake, yes, for sure. Awesome, All right. yes, Dave. Well, I don't know what's really coming out. I just recently seen a uh, trailer for D and D, so I'm I'm looking forward to that one. All right. Well, a couple that I think are going to be very interesting is one is 65 with Adam Driver, where he gets shut back 65 million years and fights prehistoric dinosaurs. Mm. I think that's going to be cool. I'm or, really also Turok. excited about the Little Mermaid. I think it's going to I think it's going to exceed expectations and I just can't wait for all the people to complain that she's of a different race. I think it's I think she's going to do fine. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um a couple of other ones that are coming out this year. You have Transformers Rise of the Beast, you have Guardians mm -hmm. of the Galaxy 3. Awesome. You have the Hunger Games prequel, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, oh. Legally Blonde 3. Yes, yeah. Blonde 3. Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> you have John Wick 4. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You have um Dune Part Two. Oh. And you also have a movie now. I'm on the fence about it. I don't know, but it's called Wonka. And it's about Willy Wonka when he meets the Oompa Loompas. It's like a prequel, I guess. So I don't know, but I, I star and Rowan Atkins is in there somewhere. So I'm it's gotta have some funny stuff in it. Either really something. great or absolutely terrible. I think right. Timothy Chalamet is uh, playing Wonka, right? I think so. I, yeah. Yeah. So I mean I'll watch it just because he's in it. So exactly. It's gonna be interesting. He's a good actor, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now that we got the icebreaker out of the way, we're getting ready to hit some, <laughs> we're getting ready to shoot some heavy stuff. Are you ready? Uh -oh. And that just gave you a clue what this question is going to be. Oh, man. Alec Baldwin was recently, oh, yeah, recently charged with, yeah, murder. Okay. What was it? Second degree? Manslaughter, I believe. Second degree. Manslaughter, right. Here we go. Let's, let's, let's divide the group really good now. Are you ready? Number one, mm -hmm. do you think he should have jail time? Number two, do you think he will serve the jail time or do you think okay. he will pay them off? And number three, do you think no. that he should be the one that's taking the fall mm -hmm. because somebody else really didn't do their job and check the gun, even though he's the actor that was supposed to check everything before you fire a gun on the set? We all know this. Do you guys think that he should be held liable for basically the charges that he's being accused of. So mm -hmm. Brett, we'll start with you. This is going to be, this is, I, I, and I don't want to make this political. So oh. let's not keep, let's not go there. I just want to know because a lot of times famous people get off of doing bad things. So let's start with Brett. Brett, your thoughts well, on that? Well, one, I don't think it was actually his fault. I, I put the blame toward the prop master. They okay, should have. I'm, I'm gonna let me let me answer a question real quick. He is a producer of the movie, true. So I'm sure he has a hand in hiring on who the prop guys are, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, so I just wanted to throw that out there, just in a roundabout way. You know, he should have checked the gun himself. You know, so uh, he 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 probably should do a little jail time, just for the because uh, he effed up, man. Yeah. killed somebody do i think he'll do any of the time probably not right all right kyle um i'm gonna be in largely agreement with the brett um honestly i think as a producer i think he is 
culpable for the crimes to some degree. Um, you know, he is responsible for kind of like, you know, establishing that production as a producer and like who's hiring on the non-union gig and the directors and all those kind of things like that. He does share some of the responsibility and the prop master and those people responsible are being held accountable too. I mean, they're not going to work in Hollywood ever again. Right. Um, so um, I think I wish there was a, an appropriate punishment for him that he would have to suffer. Um, I don't think jail time necessarily is the right answer. I don't think it really teaches anything necessarily. Uh, you know, it could be, the, it could be already enough. Like just the guilt of actually killing the person is a pretty good, a guilty thing enough to, you know, scar you for life. So that could be, it could already be covered. But uh, in general, I don't think he's ever going to see jail time. He'll probably pay his way out again, as most Hollywood stars do. No Hollywood star faces real punishment these days, or ever back in the day, even. So uh, that's what I think is going to happen. But uh, I think he should be held accountable to some degree, and uh, hopefully he will, but I don't think he'll suffer many consequences. All right. Carl? Uh, yes, I think he should be found guilty of this. Um, he's basically said he didn't do anything wrong, and it's not his fault. And the gun just went off on its own. He didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, he didn't so, pull the trigger. I was like, uh, that's what. what it, yeah, and <laughs> I know guns, and yeah, he's flat lying about that. Now this is all in New. Where, like, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but it's all in New Mexico. So will he do jail time? Probably not. But it's not in Los Angeles. It's in New Mexico mm-hmm. that he's being held. Um, that I guess will be the trial will be held. So. Who knows? He could end up doing some kind of jail time, but it's unlikely. But maybe, mm-hmm. just Christine. maybe. Christine, um, I believe it is. He all I well, he did point and shoot, and you're never supposed to do that with the real gun. You're never supposed to point and pull the trigger. So ultimately, I think he is responsible. Uh, the armorer is also responsible. It was her responsibility to check and make sure there was no ammunition in the gun. So yeah, he, he bears responsibility. I, I agree with Carl. He did. You can't, a gun can't fire without pulling the trigger. So yeah. And you know, I, uh, the, I think the, he might plead, plead. I think he might do a plea deal. He might end up ple- pleading out. I think he should serve time because he did ultimately kill her. So that's my opinion. Right, and I can't help but think the dovetail on the back of that of what happened uh, during the making of The Crow with Brandon Lee. Um, you think Hollywood mm-hmm. would have learned by now that you, what you got to do and what you can't do. I'm sure people got busy and steps were missed, but they're, yeah. they should be held accountable. This so. is largely unprecedented. I mean, Brandon Lee was a different scenario, too. That was a right. that was a mistake in the actual, you know, the, the casing itself being left in the barrel there. You know, in this case, it was loaded with real bullets, which is just insane to me that they would even be, you know. Yeah, the- I think it, it was a sloppy set. Weren't they um, out shooting guns anyways? Weren't, weren't yeah, they out, real uh, bullets before the actual show. I think they actually shot they that gun ones, earlier in the day. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was a yeah. sloppy set to begin with. And right. to me, the crow, the crow incident was an accident. I, I just believe that wholeheartedly. Right, but I but I believe they that Hollywood at the time should have put more stuff in place you know what I yes. mean? Yes. So this uh, stuff you're like right. we're talking about today or tonight wouldn't have happened. Would not happen. Well, what I'm curious to know is why weren't they using actual prop guns that are the eight millimeter or whatever that you can only put blanks in? Because they wanted to more realistic, Brett. No. We just talked about the Planet of the Apes guns that were bad wood barrels and all that stuff. And maybe different states have different laws. I don't know. Right. <laughs> and, and that's actually kind of point. Like Hollywood does have this Hollywood, and like that's why this, this didn't happen in Hollywood. This happened in New Mexico, where it was a non yeah. you know, like there. So like all the original More. rules that were usually followed in Hollywood weren't followed here. This is where that failure is, and that's where we have these debatable questions of like, okay, how culpable is he? And it seems like we might have universal agreement. I don't know, but like I think he is guilty. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead you and know- move on with Tiffany, so we, we can keep moving along here. Because <laughs> yeah, sorry, we'll talk about this all night. <laughs> um, I kind of feel like this was a multi-person, multi-channel failure on this part. Um, there were multiple people involved with handling that weapon, um, or even just being looking over it. I'm sorry, my words are a little bloop, but no, um, I wonder why. I think <laughs> it's not that <basketball> yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How my, many glasses in? My Bible put I, out. I I think that everybody involved with handling or putting that prop gut or not even prop at the gun on the set should be responsible in some sort of way and should face some sort of punishment whether it be jail time or anything else but i know if it was my hand that had to pick up a real gun on a set 
and I pointed it at somebody to shoot it, I would make darn sure that I checked it over and over again before I even touched it and raised it to do that. Um, it was just sloppy and it didn't have to happen. And now some person, you know, this, this, she's dead. She's gone. She's not coming back. And it's a terrible, terrible loss for something that could have never happened if somebody would have taken an extra five, 10 seconds to check that weapon before handling it. Right. Jen? Um, I mean, I agree with Tiffany. It was an absolute uh, failure of duty of care. I mean, he he shares the fault just as much as the, the armorer does. Um, as for whether he's going to serve jail time, probably not. He'll probably end up on some kind of home incarceration or something to that effect and some huge fine. Um, I mean, I do think at the end of the day, he's absolutely, he bears responsibility. He was the producer, it, you know, it was his responsibility to make sure he was hiring qualified people and that they were doing their jobs properly. And like you all said, also, you know, you load a gun and you go, you're not supposed to point it at people. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. All right. Greg? Sorry, I thought we were going to Natasha first. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Natasha. Oh. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Somebody's reckon... paying attention to the notes. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Greg. <laughs> Um, yeah, I reckon everyone's responsibility at work is to keep everybody safe. And yeah, he should have really just checked it, especially if he was producer and all that stuff. You think like, you know, you're handling something that's dangerous. You have a little look and just to be sure before swinging a gun around. Um, I honestly don't think he's going to do any jail time. I don't know if jail is probably a bit too harsh because it was an accident. But in saying that, it did cost someone's life. So, you know, like, is it too harsh a punishment? I don't know. But I don't think he'll serve it regardless. I think he'll just pay everybody out and, um, yeah, they'll be fined. And hopefully it changes standards for workplace health and safety on movie sets and stuff because, like, something like this should have never, ever happened. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're all responsible for keeping ourselves and everybody safe at work. And, yeah, it's just, it's sad. For everyone involved. Right. Greg? So I'm kind of on both sides of the fence here. I think that as a a person trained in gun etiquette, right, the first thing we do when we get a gun, no matter if it's a prop gun or a toy gun or anything, as someone that's handled guns in the, in the past or currently every day, you know, we pop it open, we look at the barrel, we see this unobstructed, we see that it's unloaded before we do anything with it. Right. And I think the, the case with uh, Brandon Lee, that was definitely the case there. It was definitely a obstructed barrel that mm -hmm. caused the, the blank caused the cap to the, the cap exploded, causing the slug to go out with this one. It was just improper usage altogether. Right. And he's saying he didn't pull the trigger. We all know that's nonsense. So there is a certain amount of liability. But, you know, I bring up Alex Proyas the director of the crow, he didn't, you know, right. he had to live with that. And the same thing with, um, uh, Michael Massey, he pulled the trigger and he had to live with Brandon Lee's death. So does Alec Baldwin. He has to live with that death. So there is a certain amount that he has to deal with on his own as far as mentally goes. And then I bring up John Landis because John Landis was the director on the set of twilight zone when not a gun no. death happened, but another death happened, and not only one, but three. The yeah. helicopter. Who was yeah. the children. helicopter? Children, yeah. So, and those were children that were not only were they children, but they were ununion, and the parents were on set during mm -hmm. that. John Landis did go to trial, so we have a case already where we've seen it gone to trial, and John Landis is obviously didn't go to jail for it. However. There is a certain limitation in today's day and age where we should know better. And I think the rock has gone on record saying he will not use any kind of live ammunition or any kind of blanks on set that all that can be added digitally. So there's a lot of things where as a, um, a culture, I guess we'll say in Hollywood, the things can be changed. Not everything needs to be practical. Like, like in horror, we want our gore practical, Gunshots maybe don't need to be so. Yeah, Dave. 
Well, I, I pretty much agree with everybody what they're saying. Um, I do think he's responsible. Um, uh, he took a life. In my, I, I don't know. Um, um, but I, I don't think he's going to serve any time for it. He's going to pay a hefty fine. It's going to be on his mind for the rest of his life. So, um, uh, but that's about pretty much what I, I think. So, right. So I, I think living with the guilt is going to be a huge part of his punishment. If he does jail time or not, even if he's in jail, he's still going to have to think about it every day. If he's not in jail, he's still going to have to think about it every day. And I'm sure there'll be not only fines, but I'm sure, I think I already read, didn't they? They already pay some sort of <laughs> ungodly amount already to the family too, I think, if I remember right. Um, so they probably get ahead of it some degree. Well, uh, and I would I would hope that he would come out of it better than Massey did because Massey right. was tormented for the rest of his life. And you know, unfortunately, he did pass because I won't say because of it, but he was tormented. While you know, it, 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 ate, it ate away at him. You can tell. OK, <laughs> number three. Who is one actor or actress that you just don't like and what movie or TV show were they in? <laughs> This is gonna get this is gonna get ugly. So oh, oh, oh. I know there's a lot of them. So Brett, we'll start with you. One that I hate, man. Oh, I didn't God. say hate. I said didn't like. There's a <laughs> <laughs> hate's a strong word, Brett. <laughs> yeah, Brett um, hates a lot of people. He, he's coming out guns blaring, bro. We just um, talked about Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Calm down, Brett. This is hard. <laughs> uh, I don't even know, man. That's you want to switch where you get a minute because I got mine cocked and ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, Kyle. All right. Wait, all right. Hey, I, is I, that I a joke from the previous question, Kyle? Cocked and ready. <laughs> oh. I got my own pet peeve going. I've had an actor for years, and I'm like, I don't like this man, and I don't approve of him in a very real and serious sense. Um, that I feel like I'm setting up way too hard now. But uh, Andy Dick, I hate him to death. I, I, he's a terrible person. He's the reason that Phil Hartman's dead. Yeah. And, him, and I, I, I despise him. He's a, a drug addict, sexual misconduct, who's been gotten multiple allegations and been arrested before. And he's an absolute just bane of existence on humanity that needs to be separated. Um, he was in the army now with uh, uh, who's Holly Shore. Holly Shore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is an excellent movie that I watch in spite of him. <laughs> <laughs> And that is an actor I, I absolutely despise, Andy Dick. All so, right. Yeah. Brett, Can I go next? No. Oh, wait your uh, turn. I'm going to say <laughs> John Boy right. from the Waltons. I cannot stand John Boy from the Waltons. John Boy from the Waltons. You didn't even like him in the uh, It? No. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like that guy. Okay. <laughs> okay, Brett. <laughs> there you Carl? go. There's my answer. <laughs> Carl? Okay. I'm just going to throw out just – Will Ferrell, and I'll tell you one reason because what? he ruined that darn Land of the Lost movie. That was my favorite show as a kid. That stupid, you know, uh, stop animation show. And I was all excited they're making a movie about it. And Will Ferrell comes in and ruins the movie. So I don't like Will Ferrell just because of that. I thought you were gonna be mad at the witch. <laughs> just <in> a bad <laughs> movie. <laughs> all right, so there we go. See. Um. I, I've never really liked Anne Hesh offhand. I can't think of any movies she was in, but she was in Psycho. She was in a uh, six day, seven okay. nights there's a board. Well, yeah, she's I dead just... now, so yeah, yeah I, I know. I know. I know say don't speak ill of the dead, but I never really liked her much. <laughs> Tiffany? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I absolutely despise Tom Cruise. Oh, I will never oh, put no. stuff in his wallet. And I don't like Julia Roberts. <laughs> oh, she had two of them. Right. Yeah. Wow. I don't like either one of them. They just make my haunches go funky, and I just do not like it. <laughs> I don't like them. See, I like their movies. That's about it, though. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> um, I'm just going to say it. I, I, Jared Leto. And bonus points because, except for the one song he did with 30 Seconds to Mars, I hate him in that, too. So. <laughs> Look at Natasha. Sure. She's about to fall wow. off the side of the mountain. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right, Natasha, who you got? I don't like Sandra Bullock. I don't get her. Like, I don't even know why she's famous. All of her roles are pretty much the same, same kind of movies. I know she did Speed, but I mean, that was like 100 years ago now. What? That's like, what, a 40 year old movie? Wow. And I don't, think she... I don't know. It's that old. <laughs> I don't know. 
it's yeah. older than I am, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and it's like all she did was scream. She wasn't even really like the star of the show. I don't know. I don't <laughs> get her. I don't know why she's <laughs> famous. She's just so bland. Mm. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> There's some answers that are just shocking. So well, let's go to Greg because Natasha, you about just blew him off the chair yeah. with that one. So Greg, I can't believe you're Sandra attacking Bullock. Sandy B. Sandy B. is a fuck. I'm sorry, is a national treasure. Okay, she's Miss Congeniality. <laughs> she needs to be yeah. protected. She is this generation's um, Betty White. No, yeah, oh. no. that's a little too, a little too far. My goodness. Oh my no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, she's pretty average. <laughs> is, is Greg still here? Or did we lose Greg? Uh, I think Greg may have froze he's up. Freezing. Uh, Greg, yeah, he's freezing. Greg, you're frozen. It's too much. The Sandra Sandra Bullock too thing much. Like city, man. <laughs> just threw him out. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to Dave. We'll get Greg when he pops back in. Dave, I uh, I don't really have someone I just like. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. No. <laughs> Just love um, Dave's, Dave's the one nice person in this group. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say because I think it needs to be said. It's probably, gonna, it's probably getting ready to make a lot of people mad. Tom Hanks. What? what? Oh. No, I'm kidding. I'm oh. kidding. I love Tom Hanks. Made. That's amazing. I'll let you know. Own it. Own it. I was, was looking down and I looked up and I seen a bunch of heads go. What? I was gonna say, hey, I'm why kidding. not? No, but uh, if I had to pick, it'd probably be Goldie Hawn. I've never oh, really been a big fan of Goldie oh. Hawn. Uh, Bird on a Wire, uh, even Death Becomes Her that we covered, and See, Private Benjamin or whatever. Meryl Streep, and I know yeah. that's. I really don't like Meryl Streep either. I've, I've seen a couple of movies hmm. I like, but she's not really my my forte. So now that Greg's back. back, Greg, we skipped you because you froze. So let's go ahead and get you back in here. Yeah, I know. I don't know what happened. All I heard yeah, was, was that Sandy to... B man. The, the Sandra <laughs> Bullock thing hit you in. Stay the shot. I am still <laughs> shook. Yeah, for my goodness. So what one. I was going to say was Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson is the yeah. most obnoxious yeah. and unfunny person I've ever seen in my life. So, <laughs> yes, Can we even consider him an actor for real? Who? Can we even consider him an actor for real? No. I don't. No. But he no, was he not. was in a movie for this year. Body, and a lot body, of people, it was on a lot of people's top tens. And I, I, I respect everybody okay i really do when it comes to people that do the same thing that i do which is talk to people on the internet i respect you and i respect your opinion and i think that that's great that we're putting it out there however if you say pete davidson's a good actor i'm gonna tell you you're full of crap <laughs> that's why everybody's got opinions you know like Davidson is a one-trick pony and he plays a douchebag really well that's what they call all, right. all right moving on to number four since we that one was a real barn burner wait till you hear the here we go who is your favorite cartoon character of all time? Brett, go. Bugs Bunny. Oh my gosh. Kyle. You're gonna hit me with that right now? Oh my gosh. Uh <laughs> that would have been my end. Oh, oh man. Carl, you might swap the movie for a moment so I can mm. next. <laughs> oh, Carl. Okay. Carl, you might swap the movie real quick. Come back to me. Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Christine? Oh. Peppy Le Pew. Atta girl. I love Peppy. Hey, quick story. <laughs> a good one. Um, I was a supervisor at a warehouse. Actually, Dave was there working for me at the time, but um, I had just found a nice gray Peppy Le Pew was on the, the 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 hat. I wore it into work, and I get there, and I have an email that says, you have a sexual harassment class. <laughs> oh, my God. And I wore it with my Peppy Le Pew hat. True story. <laughs> True story. So, <laughs> No, uh, Tiffany. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I would say that's serendipity, but that's the fact yeah. that that's a Sandy B movie, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say that now. <laughs> Red card. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany. Um, I'm gonna say Garfield or Peppy. I love Garfield. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have good. any cases against him, so he's safe. Right. But and he loves lasagna. <laughs> yes, ben? I do too. Um. <laughs> Well, I have kind of two. I really like Courage the Cowardly Dog has always been one of my favorite. And then um, the Tiny Toon Adventures, I really liked all the characters in that. So, yeah. Natasha? I don't know. That's really hard. I'm like, there's a few, like, cartoon characters that I do like. 
Like I like Tommy from the Rugrats. <laughs> but then I also really like Angelica as well because I feel like she's so misunderstood. But then I also really like my Disney princesses. Oh, it's a hard one. Marvin the Martian. All right, Greg. I want to say that it doesn't matter what Natasha says because I love her accent. I know. I'm telling oh, you, man. <laughs> you were going to hate on me for Sandra Bullock. I'm like, wait for it. Well, that's, <laughs> I will give you hate on that. But what I'm if Sandra change. Bullock was a cartoon character? Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That'd be the Jessica Rabbit of my generation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cheat. No Batman the animated series, correct? And I'm gonna stay with Batman the animated series. It's it's right. by far. good good answer. It's one of the best uh, best cartoons can... of all time, dude. I can put my nerve I'm glad you said that because I almost said Rogue from the '90s X Men. Oh yes, the '92 X Men. Yeah. Oh, that would have yeah. been perfect. I love that theme music too. Yes, they, they, the they actually use that theme music for the night. The, what they're calling '94 X Men now as yeah. well. So, yeah. What is it about a lot of the '90s cartoons that they just got right? Like they just haven't been able to recapture some of that stuff, even in the newer cartoons. Just... Well, you know, you know, you say that, Jen, but Carl and Brett are like, "Hey, what about the cartoons of the '60s and '70s that they still can't get right that they well, messed up in the '90s?" You know? To be to be fair, I have Scooby Doo horror characters tattooed on my arm. Oh. So, to be all fair. right, uh, okay, I, I finally, I finally. Got Got my oh, let uh, Dave go first. Yeah, mm-hmm. Dave. Oh, uh, Optimus Prime. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, that's a good choice. Nice. Yeah. Kyle, I'm gonna go with uh, go uh, Vegeta from Dragon Ball. <laughs> You would. You would. The yeah. ultimate edge lord loses every fight he's ever been in, but he still insists that he's the ultimate warrior in every scene he's in. He's the ultimate <laughs> dummy, and I love him to death. Right. Yeah. Um, I think if I have to pick, if I could only watch one cartoon the rest of my life. It'd probably be Tom and Jerry. Uh, oh, just yeah. because there's some really good stuff that they do, and it's just hilarious. Um, I also like He Man. I thought that was a great cartoon by G.I. Joe. I mean, I could go on and on because cartoons are my thing. Um, so we'll move on. Um, oh, I yeah. have you and I need to talk then if cartoons are your thing, man. We can we can talk all day. Oh, dude, dude. I, my, coll- <laughs> my voodoo question is crazy. So, all right, I have two more questions. One is kind of a serious one. And the other one's kind of a not so serious one. Which guys? Which one would you guys like first? You want to hit the heavy hitter first? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. The Razzie Awards. Um, if you've listened oh, to our oh. podcast, the Razzie Awards have been coming up a lot um, on our podcast. But also, uh, they actually were in the news just a couple of days ago yeah, because the Razzies awarded the young girl from the remake of uh, Firestarter for a Razzie, and yeah. she's a young girl. Mm-hmm. Um, 12. So my, 12. Qu- my question is, the Razzies apologized. Should kids be allowed to be nominated for bad awards or bad jobs? Um, the Ra- If you know the history of the Razzies, they do that to everybody. Um, I think even Tom Hanks has won one and, and stuff like that. So my question is, do you think since your child was put into that business, that it is right that they get the criticism or I don't want to say hate, but the criticism or whatever award for doing a bad job in the field that they are. Brett, we'll start with you. Uh, I don't, I think that they're an actor. They're getting paid to be an actor. If people don't think they do a good job, then I, I think they should take the criticism, but I actually watched that movie. I think she did a pretty good job and I don't know why they gave her a Razzie for it. <laughs> Uh, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, I agree with Brett, even though it feels like impossible to answer. Like, oh, yeah, obviously, be up the kid. It's fine. I'm also a proponent of clubbing baby seals. You know, like, what do you say? They're just the most awful thing to a kid. Um, but oh yeah, I guess it, it's kind of got to be on a scale of just like, you got to keep in mind it's actually a kid. You don't want to be that harsh on him. Oh. But I think it's absolutely fine to criticize a child and say, like, hey, that movie sucked. And partly because of you, you know, but also you have to blame the director then at that point too. It, everyone shares the blame at that point. If you're blaming the kid from Firestarter for making a bad movie, the movie itself has to be bad at that point. Well, we know who didn't start the fire. Billy Joel. <laughs> Billy oh, Joel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that's a good one. Um, I would say yes. Coming from the eighties and criticize everybody. I don't uh, care. Christine. Um, no, I don't think they should let them nominate child actors for Razzies. I 
I don't think that's right. And actually, they they said that they would no longer nominate children for Razzies. Right. I Ooh. think. Yeah, I I don't think no, I I don't think it's right to do that. Well, if they, if, think, they, if they can't get in a Razzie, do you think they should be able to get an Academy Award then for when they do it? Oh, sure, yeah, because they can get nominated and lose. Double for double an Academy. standard. Double standard. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, but if they lose, that's not fair to them. <laughs> right. So no, yeah, but I mean, if they get nominated for Academy Award and they still lose, then. They're That's still a loser. Yeah, they can get nominated for yeah. an Academy, for Critics' Choice Awards, for all those other things and lose. That's fine. But I, I don't think they should nominate kids for Razzies. I, I, I agree with the Razzies that they should not nominate children for Razzies. There, there's a certain tone to it. They got to strike just right. It's kind of like giving you a last place ribbon. It's just like, it's like, uh, you tried, I guess. But yeah, I don't it doesn't, know. Feel, like, it doesn't feel like an actual reward. It, it it shouldn't be speaking ill of that child. Like, oh, the child is the wrong person. It's like, eh, they a child. Yeah, I mean, there's there's certain things so. you shouldn't do to kids. I think nominating them for Razzie is one of them. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Tiffany? Yeah. Uh, I also watched that movie, and I thought she did a great job. Like, I don't think that she did anything that would have would have led to her being nominated for an award that basically says you suck. No, no, she won the award, right? Didn't she win it? Yeah, she well, she, she did she win it. it. Well, still, I, yeah, I, you I won the last place it. award. That's what you did. Worst actor, yeah. yeah. Congratulations, you're the first place loser. <laughs> How old is she? How well, old? I do believe. 12? Yeah, she's 12. I mean, the women here, having grown up and been young girls at 12, you're already picking yourself apart at that point for every little thing. You're always being dissected. You're always doing this. Um, that's just one more flame to add to that fire. And yeah, they're in an adult industry. Yeah, you got to toughen up. You got to learn to take the criticisms. But that's a little out of line for me. I don't think that you should nominate a child for a, a, an award like that and vote that they win. <laughs> but then again, I, the, the devil on my shoulder is like a rewards award. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, well, but, but, <laughs> there's a lot of people that don't have anything. <laughs> let's throw this out there before we get to Jen. Now that she's out there and her name's out there, this just blew her up big time. Now it she's did, yeah. big. Bad she's press. Like, everybody, good. everybody knows yeah. her name now. So bad that's press true. is good press. That's what I'm saying. But so, I'm just exactly. thinking about the mental health that age. That that's even harder for saying a little kid because little kids don't care. But when you're at that age and especially a young woman, you're literally being torn apart for almost everything, and your mind is just as bad. So it's like. It's a very fine line, I think, that you're walking, but I'm kind of glad that they decided that they're not going to nominate kids anymore. Yeah. All right. Jen? I'm going to sound like a real jerk for this one because I feel almost middle of the road on it. Like, I do agree with what all of you have said, but at the same time, you're in this industry. It is a cutthroat industry. And, you know, like I said, bad press is still good press. I mean, unfortunately, the body image issues and all the other stuff is just hard for the course for a lot of them when they're right out there in the public like that now I mean obviously if I was their parent I'd be pretty upset that they want a Razzie but you know it's it, it's just kind of the name of the game when you're out there and you're you're you know making movies and doing things you know so all right Natasha <laughs> yeah I'm gonna be mean and say that I think that's only fair because if you're acting you're putting yourself out there for public and for their opinions and it is so subjective and I think that if you're going to be working in that industry, you kind of need to take that um, on board and learn to deal with it that, yeah, there are some people out there who are not going to like your work no matter how good you do and, um, you know, you just got to be open to it and learn how to deal with it and I hope she has, like, supportive people around her that can teach her those things um and she just shouldn't take it too seriously and not be too soft about it if that makes sense um because it's it is what it is like you know like for example tom hanks great actor but i'm sure there are people out there who hate him and you said that he wanted razzie as well so he did he got the just, razzie yeah exactly so it is what it is unfortunately yeah. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, but didn't like Halle Berry actually show up for hers when she got nominated for Catwoman? Yeah. That's just how you did it. Show up, yeah. accept it, and move on. Like most people but, aren't yeah. 10 years from now that you were a terrible actor in one movie if you've got 20 other movies that you're awesome in. You know, like it's, that's why I said yeah. I'll throw this out there. Hopefully, 
it's just a stepping stone to her career. It's just a back in my time when I got this. It can be on her award shelf when she has an Academy Award or an Oscar, you know, all that stuff. Um, but I mean, I would even give Kyle Razzi for being a co-host on my my podcast. You know what I mean? And he would just oh, yeah, with pride. Uh, I almost <laughs> deserve one for dropping so many bombs on your podcast. <laughs> all right, Greg. Greg, throw some knowledge up in here for these ladies. Oh man. Wow. Oh, okay. I, I don't I don't know how I feel about that one. Now and I feel like I'm not, not educated enough to make this comment. <laughs> um what so i'm gonna sound like the most vanilla dude ever um Um, i i don't feel like we should be celebrating the downfall of other people personally um however i do think there are certain films and things that are absolute trash i legit just talked about a 1987 movie called street trash not three hours ago okay there are certain people that have this movie be their top echelon and it it was you know what it was inspiring and it's my favorite thing to look at and there are certain people that say it's a 0.5 it's dog poo it should never be looked at street trash is one of those movies for me i'm wearing a shirt for gummo right now okay gummo is an independent film that no one's ever heard of okay it's it's absolute dog poo but I love it. Okay. I just don't think we should celebrate the the downtrodden. I don't think we should say, hey, here's an award for being the best suck. But at the same <laughs> time, I do think that it's okay to acknowledge the suck. <laughs> because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen Firestarter, the new one, and I have no aspirations of seeing it. I thought that they butchered it enough in the in the eighties. I don't think I need to see it again. Um uh, well, it's just me well i think part of the problem is instead of giving this young lady a movie of her own um her own story to tell she's trying to live up to the hype of something that's already been done and i think that might be a a bit harder on somebody because you're opening yourself up to a whole new world of criticisms because how many times does people say the remake was not as good as the original absolutely after after every movie that you that you hear very rare that the remake goes better than the original right well, we even heard about that. Jared Leto talking about Jared Leto, his Joker versus anybody else. So, I mean. but you know, my argument for the Jokers is they all belong perfectly in the movies that they're in, and you can't really judge them all against each other like that because you know the Burton movies were a whole different tone than the Nolan movies, than even Suicide Squad. You couldn't mix those Jokers into different movies, or they'd be absolutely terrible. No, but, absolutely. but you could put Mark Hamill in any of them and he'd knock it out of the part on any of those. Well, yeah, <laughs> but like that's Mark Hamill. Like that man basically is the voice of the Joker at this point. Forever. Mark Hamill is the Joker. Right. Thank you very much. All right, Dave. I I don't think uh children should be uh downplayed like that. Um but I really don't have a uh, any comment on it. So you say and they should um, be making sweatshirts and, and shoes and, and uh Somewhere in a, a country, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're getting paid for it right now. Right, right. Kidding. I kid. I kid a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's hard to live up to a remake. Okay, so we'll move on to our last and final question because I figured this would be appropriate for the group that we have here today. Group, what horror film needs a remake, a reboot? or a fresh set of eyes to start over and make it more creative. Mm. Or, and I'll start with this one, um, also, or a new villain. What I wanted, and I, and I told Brett and Carl this, I told Kyle this, the last Halloween movie, man, it was all right. If, if Jamie Lee Curtis would have just chopped off his head, I wanted to see her granddaughter, even at the end of the movie, just go over there and pick up the mask and put it on and become the new, the new killer. Because we do not have a female slasher. I mean, you could talk about I spit on your grave and all that, but as far as an iconic one, I mean, Jason, Mike, um, you, now you've got uh, that Megan out right now. We'll, we'll, we'll see where that goes. But It I'm was good. Saying, it was good. Right, but I'm just saying we more- already got Megan 2.0 coming out. But uh, to me, instead of doing these reboots or remakes or like uh, The Exorcist is supposed to be a direct sequel from the original, 
You know what I mean? It's like Halloween's timelines all all screwed up because you don't know which ones to watch in what order. Well, that Michael's not this Michael in this universe and all that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, I'd like to see a new one with a female slasher. Um, Brett, we'll start with you. That's a hard one, man. I know. A lot of them need redone, you know? Uh, I wish they would have did a better Halloween, for sure. Uh, which time? <laughs> Right. Well, this last one, especially, it was total junk. I liked the first Rob Zombie one, though. I just hated all the rest of them that made. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, Jennifer, you might, want to the... listen to, you might want to listen to your third podcast before you start talking about Halloween. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. Brett's favorite. <laughs> I, <think it> was <laughs> I mean, of, of the movies he's made, I didn't we think. We don't have would... time to go down the Halloween rabbit hole with Carl. I'm sorry. Tonight. <laughs> no. I have a shrine. That would be Rob six zombie. or seven hours. <laughs> uh, Kyle? Uh, you said horror movies, not just slashers, right? Right. Well, um, it could be slasher. It could be any of them. Yeah, well, I, I, just, I didn't want to do a slash, that's why. Um, I would say I think I want to go back and give Event Horizon the next real shot. I'm always a big fan of cosmic horror, especially in a sci-fi setting. And I always want to give it another chance of like, let's do space demons. I want to know what the devil does in space all the time and uh, really explore that in films because I think it does have some of the coolest existential horror out there. So that's why my, my vote. Uh, that's good. Sam there again. Why not? <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. Carl. <laughs> okay. I've been dash, uh, trashing and dashing on Universal for the last three weeks. Frankenstein. <laughs> and I'm talking about the Universal flathead Boris Karloff Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Do it right. Start it from scratch. It's almost 100 years old, probably by now. That would be perfect. Do it with modern stuff. Uh, they probably never replaced Karloff, but get somebody and and redo Frankenstein and do it right. Well, I wouldn't mind if they if they redid Frankenstein, but I hope they kept the the atmosphere the same, like in the 30s or whatever, with the big electric. Exactly. Yeah. That. Right. Yeah. But just a modern Ooh. version of the original Boris Karloff Universal Frankenstein. That would you be know, great. You know, I'm a big time. big fan. I'll have to show Greg this real quick. Greg, let me show you one of my pride and joy. See now the Hammer remake they did was well, but it wasn't. Ooh. Oh yeah, beautiful. Hold on, let me show you that. <laughs> All right, so Universal uh, should have, you know, they were trying to reboot everything, yeah. and they screwed it up with that Tom Hanks Ooh. or Tom Cruise mummy, yeah. and because it has Tom Cruise. In so it. those are those are my favorite, Greg. My absolute favorites. Oh, you're my man. You like <laughs> cartoons and yeah. Universal? We're yeah. down, dude. Well. <laughs> I uh, I can't carry my whole thing over there, but I've have a I have all the original posters on my wall over here. There are many posters, but I got them all lined up over here. I mean, oh, if you look good. back here, there's the son of Frankenstein right here. You can oh, see good it. man. That's so, what most people. So what's funny is most people that know Frankenstein know Frankenstein from the son of Frankenstein and not from the first two films. Right. You know, when when he's walking around like this, well, he's walking around like this because he was blinded. Yep. in one of the previous films and that's why he's walking exactly like yep. but anyway, yeah wow i can go on a yeah hole. i mean that's my stuff <laughs> so uh we actually do the universal monster movies um every october this past year i did it with my dad uh yeah. my dad wanted to be called art toast because artist was taken because he's an artist oh, so. his awesome. name's art toast so he joined <laughs> us with this year and i know some of the guys got a kick out of him so uh christine well i was gonna say frankenstein um <laughs> i know just say Young Frankenstein. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> there you go. No, young that's okay. Was um, good. My other know, thought was maybe favorite. like Ro Rosemary's Baby would be kind of cool. Mm. That is a good one. To see redone. Yeah. So Rosemary's Didn't Baby. Didn't they do a remake of that in they the did. early 2000s? They did. It was a made for TV. Adopted? Let's just not talk about it. Yeah. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't good, I don't think. It gets a Razzie yeah. Award. <laughs> it, it, oh, won the for, it won our Razzie Award. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tiffany? I have two. Um, the one, the first one that I'm going to tell you is, it was one of my favorite movies growing up. I was an 80s baby, so I would really like to see a very well done revamped um, Dolls. I love that movie. movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the second one is one that I'm kind of hesitant to say because it's pretty perfect the way it is, but I would really like to see it with new effects. Um, let's scare Jessica to death. 
That nope. one is one of their favorites. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I think Alice Sweet Alice would be a good remake too. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Greg. Greg approves. <laughs> There's not many people that know who what Alice Sweet Alice is. I think another one that would be great would be Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. Um, yes, that's my that. other yeah. yeah. Alice Sweet Alice. That was with Jodie Foster, right? No. Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields. That's right. Shut yeah. your mouth, Brett. <laughs> uh, all right, Jen. All right. So, like after the Halloween debacle, I'm kind of afraid to say my next one. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we're good. Sorry, guys. Um, my video game heart says that Resident Evil deserves a, a decent movie. I hate all of those movies that they've made, every single one of them, and I would love to see them <clears throat> go closer to the source material, mm. like Silent Hill did, and actually make a decent movie. Okay. So, I feel like that's a franchise that does um, a movie and not Mila Jovovich superpower and everything. Uh, yeah, the first right. one was okay. Um, oh, I hated them all. Yeah, I, mean, I like the, the first, first one. one. Least, first one at I least like had a little that tie that into the video games problem. a little bit. Um, well, the, I think that's the problem. Sometimes tying into the video games isn't always the best scenario. Although, if you've been watching I mean, The, the Last of Us. Yes. Yes. Oh, James, that is so good. That's why yes. I said not I mean, always, not always. But they, took some, they took some liberties with some I'm of the characters, that. but they did it in a way that was still respectful to the material, and you could still look at it and go, "Yeah, I see where you're going with that." You know, and they could totally do that on the screen with with Resident Evil. There's so many of those games you could do like one game per movie. I mean, they could have even slowed it down. I and mean, this last movie, they tried to throw like three games into one movie and swap yeah. the plot. It is unfortunate when they do that. Now, yeah. However, as long as we can say that Super Mario Brothers is the best video game adaptation of all time. Then we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you talking about the new one that was released back? No. Then? I have a song the John Leguizamo, Bob Hoskins debacle that I love. I do too, man. It's, yeah. it's just like the Masters, yeah. Masters of the Universe, man. People can hate on it all they want, but when I, saw I he, when I saw He-Man and Skeletor fighting, childhood made right there. I love them. I love them. All right, Natasha? I reckon we should redo all the Universal movies like they tried to do a couple of years ago, um, but failed a little or bit. Tom Cruise ruined with, it. Yeah, with, I don't think <laughs> he ruined it because he's a really good actor. Russell Crowe is amazing. I just think... The actual mummy that they had wasn't that great, and whoever did like the storyline or whatever just re it really fell short, which was really sad because I feel like those movies really need a good revamp and they mm. need to be scary. Like they were scary in the 30s, we want them to be scary like for nowadays as well. And I also think we need to do something with werewolves because I feel like it's so hard to get a really scary werewolf movie that makes you like you know. So I out, it's gonna be full like, moon, like an American Werewolf in London remake or something like that. Oh yeah, that'd yeah, be good. No, please, yeah, please do maybe. No. A little more horror. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even really find that movie scary though, and no, I think it was different because if you were like, it was scary for back then, but not scary for now. Well, um, and I think that that's I don't think it was one hundred percent scary either. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I think it was supposed to be a bit funny, but creepy, but not. Yeah. I don't know. I would like to just see a really, like, horrific horror movie that with werewolves that makes me, you know, like, not want to drive down the road on, like, a full moon night and just sort of sits with you. I just don't think that there is one that is like that out there that I think just, uh, just take it. Just take a picture of bread and put it on your car window. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there you it doesn't make you go out at night anymore either. So mean. <laughs> that, that made me okay. so short. mean. Hey, uh, Brad and Carl, before I forget, before I move on to Greg, I think a room for your haunt this year should have a Planet of the Apes room where Brett dresses up as Dr. Zayn. I'm not dressing up as no gorilla. La, 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 la. <laughs> All right, Greg. Gorilla. gorilla. <laughs> Need to get down here. Um, well, one movie, Natasha, I don't know if you've seen is the, uh, Cursed. I don't know if you've seen that from 2022. It used to be called uh, eight, uh, eight Pieces or Eight Eight Films eight to Die. Eight for Silver. Okay. But uh, okay. it's not scary, but it's a really good werewolf movie. Um, cool. I'm going to go right, a little bit weird. Cursed. It's uh, old school. I'm going to go 
1974, I have two. I'm going to go with 1974 and 1980. 1974, Theater of Blood, Vincent Price. Excellent. That's such a that's good. Yeah, that's good. Fun. yeah. I think that's that would out be there really with fun it. to remake with like a super funny comedian as the the titular character. I think that would be a lot of fun. Just Pete Davidson. No, no. <laughs> no. I had to bring it. I had to bring it full circle. <laughs> now you just I, like, I one of the victims. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and the second one would be. It takes all sorts of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. Uh, uh, Motel, oh, Motel, Motel Hell. Hell. Yeah. I think Motel Hell would be a lot of fun to remake, too. So those are my two. Yeah. All right, Dave. I have a million, though. Uh, I'm going to go with the Swamp Thing. There you go. Yeah. Ooh, good one. That'd be good. You know that TV show they had? Uh-uh. Canceled. <laughs> For the yeah, it got canceled and before it was ever aired. I know. My cousin yeah. was in that show. What a crime. Yeah. So, um, all right. So I think um, I think we're going to be ready to end this. Is there any last? We'll go th- uh, through um, one more time to give any final thoughts or anything. If you guys are a podcaster or hair designer, makeup artist, like I know Natasha is, um, if anybody wants to give, you know, your social medias, your podcast, uh, your your business, whatever you do, um, we'll go around one last time so everybody can do that. So, uh, Brett. Brett, the Evil Never Dies podcast, uh, along with Carl there. Uh, we're on all the social medias. We're not that hard to find. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel. Hit and like that subscribe button. You got to be cool these days. You got to say smash that like button. Smash <laughs> it, man. You gotta hit it hard. <laughs> Kyle? Yeah, uh, yeah. you can catch me on the, the Tragedy of Cinema podcast. Have you ever heard of that one? And uh, no. <laughs> I, I don't know, any podcast ever. And uh, that, that's it. That <laughs> so there we go. I plugged the first Jimbo. I did it. Uh-huh. Carl, uh, like Brett said, Evil Never Dies podcast. And um, you can check out our haunted house stuff www.countcarabi.com. Right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you can find Carl's Count Crappie Museum now on Google Google Earth or Google Maps or whatever it is. Yeah, right? you can. <laughs> it's, it's on Google Maps. Right. Christine? I, I'm just a fan of, of all your podcasts. <laughs> Thank you. Just, just a fan. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> and a listener. Uh, speaking of that, when we get off here, Christine, I gotta, I've got a scheduled for... Um, let me see right here. And Tiff, before we go, uh, February uh, 11th, Saturday night, February 11th, work for you for what we're going to do, Christine? Yeah, sure. Okay. Tiffany, February 25th to Saturday uh, night? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 25th. All right. Yes, and then Brad, March 11th. So, um, so Tiff, you're up. Um, Hopefully sometime this year, I'll finally get all of my thoughts together and actually start my own podcast. I've been wanting to do it for a while. But uh, until then... I can be heard with James on Hillbilly Horror House, The Redemption. So that's kind of. Yeah, she plays my line. She just usually shoots me. So that's, that's what, that's what <laughs> I happens. just yell at him she's a lot. To me all the time. If you James a lot, then. Right. We'll go ahead and plug in. Uh, we'll go and plug in Tim Mullins here, too. He didn't make yes. it in, but um, we are voice actors for Hillbilly Horror House, uh, The Redemption. Um, he's oh. also got his new one out uh, right now. Um, from Beyond? Yes, From Beyond. He also has solo on there, so go go give him a quick like and listen over there too. So, Jen. Well, I'm not as fancy as the rest of you all, but you can probably find me around here every so often talking about nothing and liking terrible movies. There you go. <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> um. Yep. Yeah, so as Jimbo said, I do makeup and beauty stuff. So if you're in Southeast Queensland and you need your brows done, come to me. And yeah, we'll sort them out. Do you, do you ship internationally, <laughs> Natasha? I ship internationally, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I will do you, do fly and do, do you have makeup. A, do you have a website or anything? Um, I'm in the process of rebranding at the moment, but okay. just message me. I'm on Facebook. You'll find me. <laughs> right. And Natasha also does our intro for our podcast too. Heck yeah! yeah. Oh my god, and she doesn't yes. give a you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that's I where I know that voice from. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness, that's it from the beginning that's of our it. show. It's so bad. I told my mom that, oh, do you know what? I'm doing like a swearing warning for mates podcast. And she's like, you of all people. 
Oh my God, it is so bad. So bad. <laughs> All right, Greg. Uh, like I said earlier, I am Greg from Monsters and the Mosh Pit, and uh, you can find us on pretty much all social media platforms, including TikTok, where you get to see my beautiful face make drinks. Uh, that <laughs> is, yes, it's awkward for a 40 year old uh, man that's married and has a kid and all this stuff to en enjoy the new world that is TikTok. But like and subscribe and smash that button and all that kind of. I, would, I wouldn't say that too loud because Carl's going to say Chinese are following you now. Your every move. So. <laughs> oh. yeah. You know what? I, I'll take the followers. Right. right. Uh, yeah, there no, you go. Add uh, those followers. I don't care. I appreciate uh, being on here uh, and uh, good show. Yep. <laughs> And I'm Jimbo. Uh, like Kyle said, we are the Tragedy Cinema Podcast. We do these things called the Real Talk, where we just write down questions. Um, we 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 cover a lot of them. This, like I said, this is number eight. Even though we've been going for four years, um, we have a lot of fun. Covered a lot of movies. Universal. We actually do uh, the Twilight Zone series with ADZ. Uh, he's another one of my school uh, childhood friends. Um, so we go in episode by episode through the Twilight Zone. We're in season two right now. So uh, having a lot of fun with that too. So as I do with most of oh, our. Most of our shows have how I ended. I ended the same way. So Brett, be ready to stop this recording when I get done. You know what's coming. So I always go. Well, with that being said, I think this episode's coming to a close, and that's a wrap. Kyle and cut.